There are 8,760 hours in a year. And last year I tracked every single one of those hours and the activity I did during that time. And the main reason why I did that is I was feeling really overwhelmed. I was running multiple companies, making YouTube videos almost every single day. And between everything with my personal and work life, I really was burning out. So I was trying to figure out how can I reduce my burnout and be more effective? So I began to read a lot of different books on this topic, time management, habit building, and just being more efficient. And I came across this technique of time tracking, and I'm going to explain to you the benefits of it and how it completely changed my life. And from the over 600 videos that I've made on this channel, I think this might be one of the most useful ones if you could follow along and do what I did. So in this video, we'll focus on three things, why I did this, and I think you could benefit from it too, how I did it, the app that I used to make this process super simple. To this day, I still track my time and it only takes me a couple of minutes in an entire day. And then I want to show you some of the benefits and what I learned from it after doing it for an entire year every single day. So like most people, I was multitasking all the time. I thought multitasking could make me more productive, but it was just making me more stressed through the process. So I came across a book called High Performance Habits, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And I learned most of the things that I implemented in this process from that book. So I learned three things from the book. The first was to reduce transitions or multitasking throughout the day. So transitions are, for example, when you're sleeping and you wake up, that's a transition from sleep to awake. When you get home, that's a transition from commute to personal life. So basically anything you do throughout the day where it takes you from one state to another state is a transition. Now, every time you do that, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of effort in the background of your mind. So to reduce those to the least amount of transitions throughout the day, you're going to become less stressed. Now, I learned that through doing this process and reducing those and counting how many times I was transitioning through the app and the least amount of transitions I had throughout the day, the better I felt. So that's really multitasking. Every time you multitask, you're transitioning many times in a short period of time. So avoid multitasking and avoid those transitions throughout the day to the fewest you can. The second thing I took away from the book was tracking time. Now, time tracking gives you really one insight. How long are different tasks taking you to do and is it really worth doing? So throughout that whole process, I learned, am I getting enough sleep? How long am I taking to get ready? How long am I taking to make one of these videos? Really everything in my life, I finally figure out how long those tasks are taking me. Now it says to do this for like three days or a week, but I took it to the extreme and did it all the time for the whole year. And even to this day, I still do it. And it's become a habit for me that I don't really think about. And that takes me to the third thing I learned, which is probably the main reason I keep track of time to this day. The fact that every time I do one task and I have to move on to another task, I have to pause and switch my task gives me a moment of break to change my mindset. So for example, right before I made this video, I was in email mode and then I changed it to making a video mode. So again, I'll show you the app that I do this where it just takes a second. But in that couple of seconds that it takes me to change, I change my mindset itself. So the book kind of told you to say release to yourself internally and you could release from one task to another task. So you're 100% focused on whatever task that you're going on next. So that moment of changing from one task to another task with the app gives me a second to pause. So then when I'm starting a new task, I'm 100% focused, again, not multitasking, doing one thing at a time. So after learning those three things from the book, the first thing I implemented was time tracking. And then the other things kind of came naturally to me, the takeaway that I got from the other two benefits. But time tracking, really seemed overwhelming at first because I didn't want to create a whole Excel sheet and figure out what I was doing throughout the day. But I found an app that made the whole process really simple. And I'll show you the app towards the end of the video as soon as I break down a weekly time management schedule. But basically what ended up happening is there are 168 hours throughout the week. So when I started to track my time, I realized some of the things in the 168 hours I couldn't change. I couldn't change my sleep or how long it was taking me to get ready or how long it was taking me to eat. But some of the other things with work and with personal life, I could change and alter and get a lot more out of my week. So let me focus on breaking that down for you. So instead of the 8,760 hours in the whole year, I'm just going to focus on the 168 hours per week and then break that down for you right now. 
I personally needed eight hours of sleep. That's when I was functioning at my peak. And I learned that from just altering that from week to week. Some weeks I would do seven hours or I would do six hours. And I realized I was just too tired and not at 100%. So 56 hours a week went to sleep. And you could do the same thing for yourself. Obviously, if you feel good getting seven hours of sleep, then you're going to have more time than I did. But 56 hours was gone to sleep for me to be at 100%. Then from waking up to getting ready, the showering and making coffee, things like that, it takes me about an hour a day. Now it takes me a little bit less. I kind of roll in my breakfast into that. But again, it depends if you have young children, it's going to take you a little bit longer. So it really depends on you. So put in the time that will take you to get ready every morning for me it was seven hours a week. And then there was eating that's breakfast, lunch and dinner. I usually allow 30 minutes per each activity. Obviously it changes if you go out for dinner, but on average I was doing about 10 hours a week on just eating. Then comes work. Now, if you have a full-time job, that's about 40 hours a week and maybe about five hours on average for commuting if you're spending half hour commuting each way to work. So typically that's the average. So there's not that much you could do there, but what I really measured was what I do during that 40 hours that made me a lot more productive. When I was switching tasks, and I was 100% focused on the task, I got so much more out of that 40 hours that I was getting before because I wasn't multitasking. I was so focused on a task when I got the timer going that I got it done in a, the least amount of time possible. So I really feel like I doubled my productivity in that same 40 hours I had before because I was not multitasking and focusing on one task at a time. And that left me with 50 hours of open time after I did all the other things that I couldn't alter that much. Obviously, I could be more productive in each one, but I didn't want to deprive myself of sleep or eating or rushing myself through getting ready. But it still left me 50 open hours a week that I could break up. So let me show you how I did that next. So this obviously depends completely on your life and what you end up doing with it. But typically, this is how I broke down that 50 hours. There was about half hour a day I would spend at the gym. So that's about another three hours a week that I was spending doing that. Then there was 14 hours a week that was family and friend time. That's a couple hours a day. More on the weekends, maybe less on a Monday, but that's typically what it ended up being. And I spent another 10 hours or so between watching TV and reading and just relaxing. Basically an hour a day or so was just to really do nothing and just sit there and decompress from the day. So that took another 10 hours. So that left me with 20 open hours that I spend on my business. Now, you, if you follow along with the same kind of timeline and it works with your lifestyle, you could spend that 20 hours however you want to. It could be for a hobby or more family time or building a side business like I was doing. So that's sort of the breakdown of the 168 hours. Now, what I realized is that the weeks that I was working more than 60 hours, I was feeling really burnt out because again, my hours were very productive 60 hours and I was really focused on every single task that I was doing at 100%. So every time I did 65 or 75 hours, I really burnt out. So that's another thing I took away from measuring my time is at what point am I burning out every single week? There were weeks that I worked 90 hours where I knew I just wanted to give up. And there were weeks where I was working 30 hours and I felt very unproductive. So through measuring my time, I figured out what's the sweet spot. I am self-employed, so I do work more than someone with a full-time job, but I chose to do that based on how I broke down that 168 hours a week. So again, it's completely dependent on your lifestyle and what you're trying to achieve from week to week. Now, let me show you the app that I used to make this very, very simple. And the app is actually free to start with, but when you start to track all your time, I did have to pay a little bit of money for it to basically unlock all the different tasks that I could do throughout the day. So this is right now the activity that I'm doing right now. I'm making a video. I'm an hour and 20 minutes into making this video. And as you can see, it's counting my time right now. If I was to switch tasks, so if I go to editing this video, I'll just switch it right there by clicking that and it will take me to that. Now to start, I did have to make these categories and make these tasks but that did only take me about a week. Every time I thought of a task that I started doing and it wasn't in the app, I would just add it. And then eventually time tracking became this simple 
where you just switch tasks by just moving from one task to another task. I also have my Apple Watch and the task option is on top here. So that made it a lot easier with the app. I didn't have to pick up my phone every time because my watch was right on me every single day. So I could just switch tasks that way. But if I was making a course, for example, or if I was making a filmmaking video for the different channels, or I'll just jump over here when I was going to dinner or shopping or learning, anything that I would do throughout the year, I made a task for and I would jump in between those. And then I would analyze, I would go to this report option and I'll look at my 30 days here and see every single thing I did throughout the 30 days, how long I worked on each company, how much time did I spend on my personal life, and it will break it down here by the overview of the, your whole week or your whole month. You could ultimately even look at the whole year. And the great thing is if I press this check mark here, I could break down this option by big categories instead of those individual tasks. So as you could see, Halfinity, what I'm doing right now, creating these videos, took me 57 hours this month. New Slate, which is my regular production company, took me about 173 hours. Personal life and health, that's eating, gym, everything is into one category there. And it basically broke down my whole month into this big picture overview. But if I wanted to see individual tasks, I will press the check mark. Now I have a full tutorial on how to use this app. So I'll put that in the description with a link to this app. So you could basically get it and follow along. But it basically shows you, even if you wanna look at a whole calendar overview of your whole week, here's this past week. And you could see those lines show the different transitions from one task to another task. So if I went from Halfinity to lunch, that line is a transition right here on the fourth and I reduce the amount of transitions I make to as few as I can throughout the day and I could get a good big picture overview of every single day and how many transitions I made throughout that day. And that's the big overview of the app. Again, you could watch the tutorial for beginners and you could set it up exactly like I have with big categories and individual tasks in those categories and you could figure out exactly how much time you're spending on different things. I recommend you start with just doing this for a week. You should get a pretty good idea of where your time is and figure out where that open time is that you could use for other things that might be lost right now to you without having to track that time. I hope you found this useful. I know time tracking can be an overwhelming task, but the benefits that I shared with you on this video that I took for, away from it that completely changed my life, reduced my stress, and made me a lot more productive were so worth it that I recommend you do the same. Thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I post daily how-to videos every single day, and I hope to catch you next time. Thanks for watching.